In today's story joke, a magician pulls a rabbit out of a hat at a party. The impressed host asks, how'd you do that? The magician shrugs and says, honestly, I have no idea. I was just trying to find my car keys. Ready to ditch the smoke and mirrors? All right, now that we've gotten that awkward silence out of the way, buckle up, because we're about to take a whirlwind tour through the wacky, wonderful, and sometimes downright weird history of magic. Ever wondered why rabbits appear out of hats? Spoiler alert, rabbits hate hats. It all started way back in the prehistoric era when our grug-wearing ancestors discovered the magic of, well, hitting things with sticks. Oof, grunted Grog the nearly wise. That rock moved after I whacked it with this pointy stick. Must be magic. And thus, the illustrious career of the magician formerly known as Caveman was launched. Unfortunately, his act got a little stale after, you know, the millionth time. The audience retention for stick-based magic wasn't great. Fast forward a few millennia and enter the Egyptians. Now these guys were onto something. Hieroglyphics, magical, pyramids, super magical. Mummification, that's a little out of my expertise, but definitely a conversation starter at parties. Egyptian magicians, decked out in more gold than a discount jewelry store, were the rock stars of their day. They performed everything from healing tricks, though sadly, no mummy resurrection packages, to convincing Pharaoh he wasn't balding. Spoiler alert, he was. Then came the Greeks and Romans. These folks were all about logic and philosophy, but even they couldn't resist a good magic show. Their magicians, the Magi, pronounced magicians who totally stole our act, according to the disgruntled Egyptians, were all about the theatrics. Think flashy costumes, dramatic pronouncements, and disappearing acts, although some suspect that was just them ducking out for a toga 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 party. One famous Roman magician, the amazing Fabian, claimed he could turn water into wine. The crowd loved it, until they realized he'd just snuck out back and swapped the cups. Whoops. Moving on to the Middle Ages, things got a bit dark. Magic became synonymous with witchcraft, cauldrons full of dubious eye of newt stew, and pointy hats, which again, the hats lobbied heavily against. This was a rough time for magicians. Being accused of witchcraft could land you a one-way ticket to a fiery demise. It turns out defying physics is a lot less impressive when the stakes are that high. Thankfully, the Renaissance brought a brighter outlook. Science started to take center stage, but there was still a place for a little hocus-pocus. Enter the alchemist. These folks were obsessed with turning lead into gold, which, let's be honest, sounds like a way better use of your time than arguing with a grumpy hat. Sadly, their methods were about as successful as convincing a mime to talk. Lots of explosions, zero gold. But hey, at least they invented some cool stuff along the way, like accidentally creating the recipe for Tang. By the 19th century, magic had shed its dark reputation and was back in the spotlight. The Victorians, with their love of all things mysterious, went wild for stage magicians. These guys were the ultimate showmen, pulling rabbits out of hats, much to the rabbits' continued dismay. Sawing ladies in half, don't worry, they always came back together, and making elephants disappear although that one usually involved a strategically placed curtain and a very confused elephant. Well, let me tell you a story about a magician named Magic Monty. So, that brings us almost to the present day. Magic has come a long way, from prehistoric bonks with sticks to disappearing acts that would make even Houdini jealous. But some classic tricks remain a mystery. Like, why the persistent popularity of, well, let's just say a certain furry friend and a very specific type of headwear? This enduring question deserves a closer look. Now, lights, camera, magic, mischief. The SS Abracadabra rumbled on the high seas, its passengers a rollicking mix of sunburnt tourists and bingo enthusiasts. But tonight, all eyes were on Montgomery Monty Magic, a once-renowned magician whose career had hit rockier waters than the current storm. 
Monty wasn't having a good night. Every flourish of his cape was met with stony silence, every dazzling display of sleight of hand drowned out by a squawk. Perched on a grumpy-looking man's shoulder, a parrot with a voice like a rusty hinge was Monty's nemesis. It's up his sleeve. The parrot would screech, shattering the illusion of Monty's disappearing handkerchief. Simple misdirection. It did mock after Monty's mind-reading trick. The audience, initially bewildered, found themselves erupting in laughter. Not at Monty's magic, but at the bird's scathing commentary. Monty's smile began to resemble a cracked eggshell. With a bead of sweat trickling down his forehead, he attempted his grand finale, predicting a chosen card. But before he could reveal his triumphant flourish, the parrot squawked. He led the audience to the answer with leading questions. A primal roar erupted within Monty. This wasn't entertainment anymore. It was torture by a feathered critic. In a moment of blind fury, Monty stormed off stage, muttering about revenge and an oddly specific craving for dynamite. That night, Monty lit the fuse to the dynamite. The next morning, the SS Abracadabra resembled a shipwrecked piñata. Splintered wood bobbed amongst the churning waves, the only survivors clinging to a lone door. Monty, with a singed beard and a sheepish look, and the parrot, inexplicably dry. An awkward silence stretched between them, punctuated only by the rhythmic lapping of the waves. Finally, the parrot cocked its head and squawked. All right, I give up. Where's the ship? <laughs> if you liked our joke, then please watch our next joke by clicking here. <laughs>